In China, you must know, the emperor was a Chinese man. The emperor's palace was the most splendid in the world. Everything in the emperor's garden was wondrous to behold. In the trees lived a nightingale who sang so beautifully that even the poor fishermen who had many things to do stopped still and listened. From all the countries of the world, travelers came to the city of the emperor. When they heard the nightingale, they said, that is the best of all. Wise men wrote many books about the palace and the garden, but they did not forget the nightingale. That was placed highest of all. And those who were poets wrote magnificent poems about the nightingale in the wood. Some of these books once came to the emperor. He sat in his golden chair and read and read. But the nightingale is the best of all. What's that? exclaimed the emperor. I don't know the nightingale at all. Is there such a bird in my empire and even in my garden? To think that I should have to learn such a thing from a book. Thereupon, he called his cavalier. There is said to be a wonderful bird here called a nightingale. I command that he appear this evening and sing for me. I have never heard him mentioned, said the cavalier. I shall seek for him. Sing, pee, said the cavalier, and away he ran up and down the stairs. But no one whom he met had heard talk of the nightingale. At last he met a poor little kitchen girl who said, The nightingale... I know him well. Yes, indeed, he can sing gloriously. Every evening I get leave to carry scraps from the table to my poor sick mother. And when I rest in the wood, I hear the nightingale sing. And then the tears come into my eyes, and it is just as if my mother kissed me. Little girl, said the cavalier, you will have permission to watch the emperor dine if you will take us to the nightingale. So all the courtiers went out in the wood where the nightingale was accustomed to sing. Soon a cow began to move. Oh, cried the courtiers, now we have it. No, those are the cows mooing said the little kitchen girl. Now the frogs in the marsh began to croak. Glory, said the Chinese court preacher. It sounds like church bells. No, those are the frogs, said the little kitchen girl. But soon I think we shall hear it. And then the nightingale began to sing. That's it, that's it, exclaimed the little girl. Listen, listen. And she pointed to a little gray bird up in a tree. Sounds like glass bells, said the cavalier. My excellent little nightingale, I have great honor to command your presence at the Imperial Palace, where you shall charm His Imperial Majesty. My song sounds best in the greenwood, replied the nightingale. Still, he came willingly when he heard what the emperor wished. The palace sparkled, bells chimed, all eyes turned to the little grey bird in front of the throne. The nightingale sang so sweetly that tears came to the emperor's eyes. The nightingale was a real success.
He was now to stay at court and to have his own gold cage. When he went for a fly, twelve footmen held on to twelve ribbons tied to his legs. There was no fun in flying that way. One day, the emperor received a large package from the emperor of Japan, on which was written, The Nightingale. It was a little work of art, a toy nightingale, very much like the real one, completely covered with diamonds and rubies and sapphires. So soon as the toy bird was wound up, he could sing. Everyone cried, how beautiful. Now they must sing together. What a duet that will be. And so they had to sing together, but it didn't sound very well. That is not the fault of the new bird, exclaimed the music master. His rhythm is perfect. Then the toy bird had to sing alone. Three and thirty times did it sing the same piece. The emperor said the living nightingale should have his turn. But where was it? No one had noticed that he had flown out of the open window back to the greenwood. And all the courtiers abused the nightingale and said that he was a most ungrateful creature. We have the best bird after all, they said. But one evening, when the toy bird was singing, something inside the bird said whiz, something cracked, and then the music stopped. They sent for the royal watchmaker, who repaired it as best he could. But he warned that the bird must be rested. Only once in a year was it allowed to sing. Five years had gone by, and a great sadness came upon the Chinese people. They loved their emperor, and now he was ill, and it was said could not live much longer. Cold and pale, he lay on his gorgeous bed. High up through an open window, the moon shone in upon the emperor and the toy bird. The poor emperor could hardly breathe. He opened his eyes and there saw death sitting on his chest, wearing his crown and holding his sword and his banner. Music, music, cried the emperor. You precious little golden bird, sing, sing. But the bird stood still. No one was there to wind it up, and it could not sing without that. Only death was there, watching with empty eyes and silence. Then there sounded from the window the most lovely song. It was the little living nightingale, bringing comfort and hope to the emperor. Even death listened and said, Go on, little nightingale. And as the little bird sang on, death gave back the emperor's treasures and departed. And the blood flowed quicker and quicker through the emperor's weak limbs. said the emperor, you heavenly little bird. I banished you from my empire, yet you have sung death from my heart. How can I reward you? You have rewarded me, replied the nightingale. I have drawn tears from your eyes with my song. You must always stay with me, said the emperor. You shall sing as you please and I shall break the toy bird into a thousand pieces. Not so, said the nightingale. It did what it could. I cannot build my nest in the palace, but I will sit by the window in the evening and sing you something so you will be glad and thoughtful.
I love your heart more than your crown. Mm.